news just coming in news which is just coming in saying that uh, Wiseman Harry which is now who's now called Apostle Harry who was at the synagogue he was one of the wise men of Prophet T.B. Joshua at the synagogue the white guy you know with the with beards huh? I usually said that he looks like Jesus he had that uh, you know th there was a time they did a play at synagogue and he he acted the role he played the the role of Jesus so wise man Harry was arrested in Greece on Saturday he was arrested this just this this uh, Saturday he was arrested and uh, for preaching and doing deliverance but Utango right now he has been released he has been released and um, the, the case is still going on okay so today we're going to talk about why was Apostle or wise man Harry arrested in Greece so guys thanks for watching I'm Cleo Fasonyama Clear with him. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're watching me for the first time. In this channel, we talk about the deep things of God in Christ Jesus. We also do commentary videos on what's happening within the body of Christ. And this is one of the commentary videos. If you want to donate to this channel, use the information in the description box or in the comment section which I've pinned below. Last man, Harry was arrested, but now he's released. Glory to God. You know, it, 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 reminded, it reminded me of the day when... Um, Prophet T.B. Joshua was arrested many, many, many years ago. There was a time Prophet T.B. Joshua was arrested on account of uh, drug tra trafficking, imagine. They said that Prophet T.B. Joshua was selling drugs. Do you know people who sell drugs? You know, in this world, don't be, that's why I tell you, don't believe everything here. Don't believe the rumors, the bloggers, they tell you, so, so, they, they tell you this and this and so. Don't believe it. But he was released. He was released. And the people who arrested T.B. Joshua all of them, they faced, they faced a lot of misfortune in life. Some of them died. Some of them went to prison. Just mysteriously like that. And one who survived came to the synagogue to testify and ask for forgiveness and to be delivered. Because he saw what had happened to his colleagues after they arrested T.D.B. Joshua. What happened to them was not normal. Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Let me tell you something. Why does God say that? No, you don't understand the anointed. The anointed one, the anointed one is not an ordinary person. You see, everybody is anointed. It's true. We are all anointed, but our measures are not the same. Our measures are not the same. Everybody has a measure of the anointing. And there's some anointing which are higher than others. That's why they are able to stand on that office. Yes, you are anointed, but you have an office. I'm not talking about a physical office, an office which God has put it himself. Anybody operating in certain office, there, is a, there are proofs to show. Not just putting titles, apostle, prophet. No, there are proofs. You see, you know this one is a prophet. You see, you, see, you know this one is an apostle. Because you see the color. If you see fish, you know this is fish. You see the parts of the fish. If you see chicken, you know this is chicken. You know, you see the parts of the chicken. So you can't show me fish and then tell me this is chicken. No. You have to see the characteristics and the features which are found in a chicken for you to know that it's a real chicken. So people, an anointed person is not somebody to, to, be, to be messed with. You know, do you know why? Do you know the reason why Lucifer is not bound? Because Lucifer was anointed. The other angels were not anointed as Lucifer. The Bible said anointed, he was anointed cherub. Somebody who is anointed is set apart from destruction. You cannot destroy an anointed. Only God himself can handle him. That's why Lucifer has an appointed day for God himself to deal with to, to deal with him. That's why Lucifer is not even arrested today. He rebelled, he did many things against God, but he's still not arrested. Why? He was anointed. Don't joke with the anointing. Don't joke. Lucifer is not bound. Nobody has bound him. He has never been bound since he was thrown out of heaven. He has never been bound. Bound. He's walking. The Bible says walking around looking for who to devour. Why is anointed? Don't joke. Once anointed, the Bible says the giftings and the anointings of God have no repentance. Yes, he's not of God. He has been sent away from the kingdom of God, but still he has the anointing. He is. He has that mark of touch not. That's why even Angel Michael could not do anything to Lucifer. He could just defeat him, but he could not kill him. 
he could not put him in the lake of fire until the time comes where he is an anointed. And like, don't do it with anointed. Anointed somebody set aside from the from, from destruction. I'm not saying that Lucifer is good. He's not good. But I'm trying to explain to you the meaning of anointing. This is why even Paul, sorry, sorry. This is why even David could not kill Saul because Saul was anointed. Regardless of him being rejected by God, Saul was rejected by God. God had, you know, Saul was possessed by evil spirits. God had anointed David to take the place of Saul, but yet David could not kill Saul because David knew Saul was still anointed. Somebody who is anointed is set apart from destruction. Whatever follow they may have with God is about is between him and God. Don't interfere, intervene. Others will pay a heavy price. That's why the anointed means. That's why the Bible say, touch not my anointed. If you think those are just stories, they're not stories. They're true things. Now, they arrested him for preaching the gospel. Just imagine. They arrested Apostle Harry for preaching the gospel, casting out devil. You know, this is what I call real revival. You know, people saying that there's going to be a revival. There's going to be a revival. You think revival is easy. Revival is not easy. Revival comes at the midst of oppositions. Anywhere there's a revival, check there's opposition. In the early church, the, the early church grew in the in the face of adverse opposition. The church grew in the face of adverse opposition. People were killed. Paul was going around who was not formally so looking for to arrest people to be killed. It was no joke. You know, preaching the gospel was like terrorism in those days. When they find you, you are arrested. You are not supposed to preach the name of Jesus. And yet, the church grew. And yet, there were signs and wonders. And yet, God increased them. And yet, there were inflation. And yet, the, the sick were healed. People were delivered. No TV, no internet, no government connections, no nothing. In fact, the government was against them. The government had branded them to be like terrorists, and yet the gospel spread. Don't joke with it. That's why they call real revival. Now, now we see that's what happened to uh, Apostle Harry. They are arresting him for preaching the gospel, and I know most of it is not even preaching the gospel. It's about demonstration of power. One thing that I know that anywhere power is demonstrated, it causes it causes a, re a reaction. People don't like power to be demonstrated. They don't, even Christians, these Christians, they speak in tongues, but the moment you start demonstrating power, they start saying, mm, this one is not of God. They read it, they quote it in the Bible, you know, they, they teach it, but the moment you act it, you become it, you demonstrate it, they reject you. Paul say, having a form of godliness, but deny the power there from such, turn away. They have a form of goodness, but they deny power. So, I thank God he was released, but I know God is, is with him. Listen, I, I know where he, where he is. He's happy. Let, let me just say, these are, the, these are the characteristics of a true minister. You read the Bible. The Pauls, the Peters were arrested. They were flogged in public. Paul and Silas were flogged in public, arrested, and then after being flogged, imagine a flog, you have sores all over the bodies, and you have the guts to sing and praise God at midnight until the gates were open. The prison gates were open. That's, that's what I call about, that's what I call really preaching. Let me tell you something, this, the, 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 the preaching of, of the gospel of today, okay, it's good, it's good. I, I thank God for the changes we have, the civilization. But let me tell you something. People who preach the gospel and enable us to, re to be written with the gospel, they were never comfortable. The, 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 that was the order of the day. Being arrested, being flogged, being, being tormented, being killed. Being, and listen, despite going all these things, they never gave up. Now, I usually ask myself this question. If the church of today was taken back to those eras where people were being persecuted, people were killed, will the church still be strong as it is? Will people really preach the gospel? Will, 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 will we still have many churches like we have? 
today? That's a question we need to ask ourselves. Because the gospel is not easy. And Jesus told them, you'll be persecuted in my sake. Jesus did not tell them that, oh, it's going to be easy. You're going to preach. It's going to be easy. You're going to preach. You're going to relax. Jesus told them, you are going to be persecuted. And persecution is one of the blessings of for, for, for us Christians. The Bible says, when you are persecuted, you are, it's part of the blessing. Don't cry when you are persecuted. It's part of the package. Many Christians don't like it. Many pastors don't like it. But persecution is part of the package of the gospel. It's, 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 it's part of the package of the blessing of the gospel. Persecution. But I, I thank God he has been released. And uh, you cannot stop the gospel from being preached. And I like it the way... I, I told people, God took T.B. Joshua for a reason. You know, T.B. Joshua was a seed. Prophet T.B. Joshua was a seed which God released upon the earth. I will say it. T.B. Joshua was a system which God released upon the earth. Now, out of out of T.B. Joshua, the system T.B. Joshua, there are mantles which were released to men. And one of the people who has these mantles is Apostle Harry. That's why, because if you see his ministry, it's just a replica of T.B. Joshua because he was was trained by T.B. Joshua himself. That's why even the church is called Scorn Thessalonica. It, it's in Greece. And see now, right now, there's, there's going to be a great move of God. Revival. No, there's deliverance in the streets. He does deliver in the streets. People are seeing real power of God being demonstrated. Real anointing of God being demonstrated. It's not something you just read in the Bible. Something people see practically. People can have an encounter with the church of God. And this is the revival which I want. And this is the revival which the church needs. And there's so many sons of Tibetan right now who are doing great things. There's Prophet Kakande in Uganda. There's Prophet Alan Jomba in Kenya. Apostle John Chi in Cameroon. Wise man Daniel in Abuja, Nigeria. Rasin. Prophet Rasin, I don't know which country he is. Prophet Chris is in UK. Prophet Zinka. There are so many. Prophet Magaya. So many sons of Timothy Joshua. And God is going to use them mightily to bring deliverance and to bring revival upon the earth where people experience the real power of God in healing, saving, and changing the lives of people. So, guys, guys, I ask for all, all of you, Squan people, the the sons and daughters of Prophet T.B. Joshua, the whole family of Squan of Prophet T.B. Joshua. Let's continue to pray for one another. Let's continue to pray for our family. Let's going to pray for our family. Let's pray for Wiseman Harry, Prophet Apostle Harry, so, so that God, the hand of God, can be upon him more to strengthen him to go through whatever he's going through. So, guys, I love you. May God bless you. I'll see you in the next video.